Four decades ago, Pastor Jason Alvarez topped album charts worldwide with the number one single, Shame, Shame, Shame. And since then, he's gone on to do some great things with Nikki Cruz, R.W. Shambach, pastoring with his wife, Gail, the Love of Jesus Family Church in New Jersey and planting 152 churches worldwide. Last time you shared from your new album, Time for Miracles. Yes, sir. There's powerful music there. You can just see God's hand all over it. And uh, I wanted you. to kind of get your, your back story a little bit, uh, kind of, you know, how you came to faith in Christ, uh, how God got a hold of your life and, and put you in a place where uh, he's using it in such a powerful way. You shared last time that uh, you had an appointment to, to kill somebody. I, I did. God, I really did. That was the night that God arrested your arrested heart and soul me. and brought you to himself. You know, um, when you're miserable, you blame everybody else for your troubles. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, my wife was going to church on a Thursday night. and um, now, now, she, had, she, she came had, to faith, too. I mean, she wasn't She was born. saved before me. Yeah, yeah. See, the funny thing is this, is that I was doing touring. I was touring with Shirley. Mm -hmm. And I came home. We were separated. Mm -hmm. And I came home and I heard that she had gotten religious mm -hmm. because now she was going to church. She wore white all the time and uh, things like that. So I, I felt so guilty. I thought, man, I've destroyed this woman. I've got to help her, you know. So here I am. I'm totally out of my mind. I'm going to help her, you know. So I go and knock on her door. She opened the door and sure enough, she's got white clothes on, you know? And I thought to myself, oh my God. She's in the cult. I said, I said I, I, what happened to you? I heard you got religious. She said, you mean born again? I said, uh, yeah, whatever, you know? And she says, yeah, I, 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 I met Jesus and uh, he saved me and I'm so happy, Jay. And I said, oh, you needed it. I said, I'm so oh happy goodness. for you. And I said, is that why you're wearing white? She looked at me, she said, you crazy nut. The reason I'm wearing white is because I've become a dental assistant. <laughs> so, but, uh, you know, but, but that, you know, I mean, and that's how I got back together with her. And she began to exemplify the mm -hmm. Christian life. I mm -hmm. began to see it. Okay. And then when I ran into a, a problem with this man that I was going to kill on a Thursday night, she was going to church. And so I asked her, can I go? And so I went, you know, I sat outside in the car. If yeah. I could say this, I sat outside in the car. I said, you go in. And I smoked a joint. i never forget as long as I live, I was out of, I was lit. Put the joint down. I went in that church and it was like, whoa. I was raised in a monastery. I was raised in a Catholic church, you know. And this place had no statues. It had no confession booth. It had no marble floors, you know. It was a little place, you know. And I was like overwhelmed looking at everybody. And all of a sudden, this guy in the aisle down here, he starts singing with a real happy face. And he's singing in a language I'd never heard. Uh -huh. And I looked at my wife. I said, what kind of, what language is that? And she said, it's, he's singing in the spirit, you know. And I said, what has it been smoking? And she said to me, nothing. I said, whatever he's smoking, I want some of it. I can, I'm going to get rich in New York with it, you know. And so I gave my life to Jesus after that service. This guy. Really? That night? That night, man. I gave my life to Jesus. I gave my life to Jesus that night. I was making records with uh, Meatloaf. I don't know if you remember Meatloaf. Oh, yeah. Um, Grateful Dead. Really? People like that. So I was with CBS Records. And I went and I began to tell everybody about Jesus, you know. <laughs> And uh, here I am, you know, I don't know nothing about God. I just got saved. I'm, I'm thrilled, you know, I'm full, you know. And I'm smoking a joint telling me, oh, man, you got to get saved, man. You know, he's, he looked at me, he said, what happened to you? I said, I met Jesus. I met Jesus, you know. And, and, you know, and then three months later, I got delivered from smoking marijuana. Mm -hmm. You believe it? Mm -hmm. I knelt down. Everybody was telling me, you need to quit smoking marijuana. I said, I said but, but I like smoking marijuana. I said, I'm going to let God tell me. You know, I got spiritual, you know. And finally, God did a miracle for me. And uh, I got on my knees and I said, Lord, I said, you know, I love smoking this marijuana. I said, but if you will grant me the grace to quit, mm -hmm. I want to do more than just tell you I love you. I want to prove to you that I love you. It's been 35 years mm. and I have been set free from mm. all the drugs I used to do. Mm. And so Jesus not only saved me, he delivered me from all those crazy drugs. And um, 
I have been uh, I have been on a wonderful journey. Yeah. Well, Pastor, would you talk a little bit? Go back a little bit. You said your wife exemplified yes uh, the Christian life, and yes. I know you're used. To, you were used to after that. You were used to you were used to seeing miracles. Yes. So talk about those two combining together because you can get a miracle, but it won't keep you there. Yes. It won't keep you saved. So it was the Christian life that really impacted. Let you. me tell you how amazing God is. My wife had a cyst in her ovary the size of a grapefruit, right? So they prayed for her in this church. And, uh, you know, to make a long story short, they prayed, they laid hands on her, blah, 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 you know, because she was going to get operated. So she goes to the hospital. I'm just like, just saved. A little bit, you know. I'm saved. I'm still smoking marijuana. I'm still doing my thing, you know. I don't know the word. I don't have the word in me. So I go to the hospital. My wife is laying there. And they're doing, you know, a test, you know. So they pray for her, and they put this little tube in there to see the, the, the position of the cyst and all that, blah, blah, blah. And the doctors get up, and they said, my God, what happened to you since the last time you were here? There's nothing there. Wow. God had done a miracle for my wife, had literally destroyed the power of that thing over her, and it was gone. And that really got my, it was like, whoa. Then I began to realize that miracles can't keep me because I continue to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. See, I continue with that lifestyle. Her lifestyle, not only did she experience a miracle, but her lifestyle began to tell me there was more to this Christian life than just getting born again. Mm -hmm. So then she began to share with me scriptures, the things of God, you know, uh, the fruit of the Spirit, and blah, blah, blah. And I began to realize, man, if I could put this word to work for me, mm. I could begin to experience not just miracles in my life, but I can begin to experience the miracle of a, of a life change. I, I could begin to walk the way that I'm supposed to walk, talk the way that I'm supposed to talk, and not only that, but think the way that I'm supposed to think, you know? Mm -hmm. And things began to change, and my life was just so turned around. It was so radical that wherever I went to tell the story, it always brought him glory. It was, it was amazing. So now you were in some, like you mentioned, some circles yes. uh, that uh, probably weren't used to guys getting born again, no. filled with the Holy Spirit, talking about miracles, getting set free from things that kind of were, were attached to their lives. How, how were you received? Did you, have to tra you had to transition out of that, that, I, that career or that, that, that environment. I told everybody about Jesus, right? And I remember telling the owner of Platinum Records, Joe Robinson. Joe Robinson was Sylvia's husband. Huh. And I told him, he's a big guy like you. So he was behind this thing, and I came in after I got saved. And I told him, I said, Joe, I said, I got born again. again. And he cursed me out. Man, he cursed me out. I mean, he <laughs> cursed me out big time. She didn't receive it, Sylvia, in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Bob, Bob, all my friends, you know, they thought I was crazy. But they knew something had happened to me because they knew me. Mm -hmm. they, I used to hang out with a warlock, a real warlock man. This guy was crazy. His name was Michael Burton. He wrote a lot of big hits, see, for Platinum. Anyway, so they knew that there was bit, that had been something a life happened. transformation in me. Yeah. So, but so, so all these guys that I told about, you know, that I told them about Jesus, cursed me out and thought I was nuts. But because I maintained my course mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I began to live this life for God, all of them, before they died, got saved. Wow. Every one of them mm -hmm. reached for God in their deathbed, man. Mm -hmm. And some of them got saved. And now there's people right now in the music industry, Corio got saved. Uh, the, 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 the manager of Sugar Hill, he got saved. Everybody began to get, and they would come to church when I started pastoring and said, we got, I got to see this for myself. I can't believe that Jay mm -hmm. is really, you know, and then he, they would come and they would, say, they, say, they would just sit there like, oh, that's him, but that's not him, you know. And so sometimes you can witness to somebody and it seems that you didn't get any place with them. Right, right. But if you stay with God and if you remain steady, they will begin to find out that this thing is not just a momentary thing. This thing is for real. And when they say your life, your life will speak, your lifestyle speaks bigger and more volumes than your words yeah. after a while. After, yeah. And they, they began to get impacted. I mean, it was, it was it's incredible. The whole, I just went to their funeral, the funeral of Joe Robinson's son. He was 
the, uh, uh, the, the president of Sugar Hill Gang Records. He mm -hmm. just died. He's 53 years old. And he's a, he was a good young man. And I, I reunited with all these guys from 40 years ago, man. Mm -hmm. Crazy. And many of them are now walking with God. Many of them are pastors now that laughed at me, that thought I was crazy. Now, now, man, now. They're serving God. It was crazy. I wasn't there. I was like, hey, pastor, man, you know, I'm pastoring in South Carolina, North Carolina, blah, blah, blah. I was like sitting there like. <laughs> Look what God can do, huh? Uh, you know what? The word. Yeah. So the word. Wherever you go, sow the word, and the word will do the work. Yeah. And so, but anyway. Praise God. Well, Pastor, we've got just a minute left, and I'd uh, love to keep talking to you, actually. But if you could just pray for Let's friends pray. that are watching today. You've seen the miracle work and power of God. You've experienced that, and uh, you've seen how he can set people free and how he set you free. And if you just take a, a moment and pray for our friends that are watching right now that are bound up, that are struggling, mm -hmm. that just need to know God's not some theory or some, uh, some storybook character. He is real, and oh. he can intervene in their lives today. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for your miracle-working power. You're no respecter of persons. I don't care if they're Wall Street people. Mm. I don't care if they're gutter people. God, you love them all, and you will manifest your glory in their lives to prove that you are the God that never ever ceases to love everyone here I pray for those that are bound by drugs like I was bound by drugs I come against you you spirit of drug addiction I bind you break your power pull down your stronghold from everyone uh, every person that's listening to the sound of my voice I command you loose your hold upon their lives in Jesus name go from them now and father do a miracle of grace like you did for me give them a new appetite let their appetite be towards you towards the things of God towards heavenly things do a miracle that there will be no denying that it's been your hand I pray for those that need financial miracles God you have made this place available good ground for them to sow seeds golden seeds in order that they might in return reap a golden harvest. I pray that you will give them golden harvest breakthroughs by the power of the Holy Ghost. Men and women that need financial miracles, if what they hold in their hand is not enough to be what they need to pay their bills, do whatever is necessary, let them turn that little seed in, into the, the, the seed that will go into the ground of this world harvest ministry and come back to them in miracle harvest form. We praise you for miracles in families, homes that have been torn apart. I break your power over every home that has been torn apart, and I loose the power of unity. Fill the heart of every husband and wife till overflowing for one another with new love, fresh love, vibrant love. In Jesus' name, and we give you all the glory and praise right now Amen. for you doing it in jesus name amen, amen. thank amen. you so much love to connect with you today and Hallelujah. if you just prayed and received something you received that impartation that deliverance you received something from the holy spirit give us a call tell us what he's done and to connect with pastor jason alvarez you can go to jam j-a-m-m dot o-r-g or as always you can go to our website harvest-tv.com for a link to his new project time for miracles and to connect with his ministry